We also need to thank uh, the Dollar Moore Foundation, the Lake City Creative Alliance, Ron McNair, and they graciously have given us this building um, every time we ask for it. Uh, we're going to have more events than Movers and Shakers tonight, uh, 1924 to 1925. And at any time you want to speak up, go ahead. You know, we'll give you the floor. Um, so let's have at it. This is Lake City in 1920. Uh, the corner building is, um, I think, Fairlane Finance now. It was a uh, Gaddy's Drug Store. Um, Miss um, Mary Lauren Smith's father was um, the, the owner of the building. Um, we also have, come on in, Miss Ann. We had C. Tucker. I went down to King Street and then saw C. Tucker's down there. But we had C. Tucker in Lake City through the 1920s. The election of 1924, I don't have, but uh, the mayor was uh, Edgar Whitehead's father, Mr. William Henry Whitehead, who was a cousin of um, Dr. J.D. Whitehead. Father. I wish Spencer's player was here tonight because I wanted to pick on him. Uh, Mr. J.L. Richardson had some bees and he stung the neighborhood. So they had an ordinance declared and saying that anybody keeping bees 150 feet away from the sidewalk um, was going to be fined. At the same time, an ordinance was passed to let the uh, chief of police have a stopwatch to catch people from speeding <laughs> in town. And then he didn't have any handcuffs to uh, arrest people. So uh, city council uh, voted to give him six dollars to buy a pair of handcuffs. <laughs> now this is being taped so I will give you a link if you'll uh, go to uh, Lynch's Lake. Uh, one of my computers went down and um, hopefully I can bring it up but I don't have anybody's email right now. So how about email me? Okay, Lake City Savings and Loan. Um, you may know some of these folks. Mr. William H. Birch, Mr. Billy Birch, and Mr. I.P., not Rainwater, but I.P. Mac White. Okay? Well, the two men that were uh, instrumental in getting the Lake City Savings and Loan off the feet back in 1924. A $100,000 fire at the uh, um, Deep River Lumber Company. Where's the Deep River Lumber Company? Would you think it's located? On Deep River Street. Okay. One person was killed by the fire. Had 200 people working for the Deep River Lumber Company. And out the population of 3,000 had 1,000 people to come and look at the fire. <laughs> and because of it being out of city limits, we didn't have the water supply uh, to uh, help the fire. What is Eastway? I'm not from here. Huh? Deep River? No, I said, what is Eastway? Misspelled something? Thank you. Okay. That's my first mistake. I'm sorry for the night. <laughs> Ms. Dr. McElveen, she was the most beautiful girl at the county fair. 
it was the end of the tobacco season, and they had a parade downtown Florence, and Lake City's uh, entry was Mr. Top McLean. And this is the float. And the driver was uh, Mr. Saddle Graham, the son of Mr. Todd um, Graham at home, Graham Warehouse. Remember back last time we talked about the Swamp Rabbits? Well, by God, they changed the name. <laughs> they are called the Brown Panthers. And I went on the internet to see what I could find of a Brown Panther. I have no clue what a Brown Panther was. But if you can look at the people, though, this guy right here, If he's not a football player, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah, people like Guy McFadden, I was on the team, Wells Collins, the famous poet of Lake City, had Jack Stewart, Clarence Holloway, which was uh, uh, Earl Holloway's brother, Rollins Epps, Um, Mark Epps, which has been Eddie Epps' father, um, went down to Charleston to play, and we lost. Okay? Uh, this was taken in Charleston, right? Class of 1924. This class was actually one of the smartest classes of Lake City High School. Ms. Flo Carmen, Mr. Slew Askins, Mayor Lewis Askins is his real name, um, Henry Epps or Merck Epps, um, Mr. Page Godwin, which is uh, um, Mr. Page Godwin's father. Mordecai was a doctor. Mordecai um, Nachman. He married a, now he's Jewish, and he married a Gentile. And his father, would you believe, ripped off his shirt and declared that he did not have a son. And they buried an empty casket in the Lake City Cemetery, declaring that he had no son. Was he one of the um, mayors of Lake City? Yeah. No, his father was. His father, his father was. Right. Then we had um, uh, Hazel Tomlinson, the third grade teacher, Dr. Thad Timmons, Dr. J.D. Whitehead, Amar Willoughby. Okay? So this is a small class of Lake City High School. The Lake City Presbyterian Church. The Lake City Presbyterian Church balked a lot from the Lake City United Methodist Church. They will go to move the church from where the church is today to um, where the Presbyterian Church is. There was a heated dispute at the Methodist Church, so they decided to sell the lot to the Presbyterians. <laughs> Y'all ready for the next slide? The attorney, I mean the attorney, Lake City attorneys, which was uh, um, Mr. William H. Whitehead and his uh, um, town attorney, was killed a coward. They were hit by a train and killed instantly. 
uh, in January of 1924. I'm 25. In 1925. 1925, we had the Girl Scouts organized in Lake City. <clears throat> now, the next part is the city council voted to fine anybody $10 or no less than $100 or 10 days in jail if you didn't have screens. On fruit stands, hop hotels, restaurants, and such. Then we have the honor roll of 1925. Catherine Neesmith, you know who that is? We have Mr. Wright, the library. Um, Dr. Lamar Lee, Margaret Carter, Marion Fowler were all smart people. Big tobacco. Would you believe the Chinese tobacco come here? Hong Kong, China, came to Lake City and was going to put up a um, tobacco warehouse because of the efforts of um, Mr. J. L. Richardson the beekeeper. <laughs> but I don't think that ever happened. Um, <clears throat> this is the warehouse built in 1924. And the guy in the corner is Mr. Tom Gr Graham. And he is from North Carolina. My brother, Jamie, almost burnt down the Graham Warehouse when he was young. We lived at the corner. <laughs> In 1953, the uh, Floyd brothers bought the warehouse. And it's located Church Street and Bl um, Blandy? No, Church Street and um, <coughs> Dancing. Church Street and Dancing. The class of 1925 had a pretty good crowd. Okay, Ansel Leedy, Cecil Floyd, Dot and Elizabeth Gowdy, Anna Mae Graham, which is, uh, I mean, Grimsley, which is uh, Phil's aunt, uh, Elizabeth and Jesse Johnson, Mr. Leon Johnson's sisters, Charles Jonah, which is Miss Leslie Jonah's brother. Carla Knight, Guy McFadden, Catherine Neesmith. On July the 4th, we had 10 to 15 carloads. Carloads of mm -hmm. squash and of cucumbers going to north, the northern part, uh, like Philadelphia, uh, New York, Boston area, and also the northern part of the state and North Carolina. It was at the depot. You remember they tore, tore it down. It almost went to Thomas Street at one time. Okay, they tore that one section down. 
the Lions Club. Do I have any lions in here besides Woody? Liars? Yeah. 1925, and then 1947, they rechartered the club. But Mr. Wesley Singletary was president. Mr. Wesley is uh, uh, Miss Mary Trickers' father. The way is the what? Hotel. That was the True Luck Hotel. That was the formal name of the True Luck Hotel. Okay? Okay. Double tracks through Lake City in 1925. So we were getting more and more sophisticated. Did they go across the bridge? No. It went it went through um it went only through Lake City and then it was uh, put into one track. And then when it passed the trestle. It was a double track. The Western Union came to town from Richmond, Virginia to uh, uh, Miami, Florida. And we were uh, at the Western Union. Before, we had to go to somebody else, I mean, like King Street or Florence to use the Western Union. The Coastal Highway. Now right here, Mr. Charles Kelly gave me this plan. This is the Coastal Highway. And it runs right through Lake City. The Coastal Highway became the National Highway, which became Highway 52 in 1939, okay? And it was a concrete road. The Klan comes to town, 1925, this, was in the paper. Now remember, the Klan is very strong in the 1920s. Out the population of 100, 100 million, we had 200, I mean, two to five million Klansmen in the United States and 50,000 Klansmen marched on Washington, D.C. So they met at the Baptist church, and they said, <laughs> and they said that the Bible was their doctrine. Okay. So the time has changed, I think. Okay. Dr. Uh, Luther Whitlock and Mr. Carlton McKenzie's father came up with the idea of coming up with a bathing pond for the young people. Okay? That was August the 5th. By August the 15th, they had um, convinced some entrepreneurs to buy Chandler's Mill. You know where Chandler's Mill Pond is? At Camp Branch. Okay, 80 acres. And they wanted the, the young people to stay in town instead of going to the Black River or the beach. Uh, yeah. The pond's still there. 
we used to throw down uh, chair bombs <laughs> when we were younger. Right there? Right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yes, yes, yes. Did they ever actually buy it? Do you know? No, I don't think they did. Um, school opened up. If you will notice, um, Miss Sarah Hagen Rollins' father was George Hagen, and he was superintendent. He got everybody outside of town to be in the high school level. Then we got Mr. Uh, Mr. J.P. Trulock to get the women in town to be the elementary school teachers. Now, how many of you had Miss Lizzie Grabble? Now, we're talking about 25, 1925. These ladies were old. <laughs> okay? Uh, Leslie Jonah was Leslie Wembley. Okay? Mr. Um, Dora Hennett. So these folks were teaching school when we were in school. High prices. When we're going over this, 800,000 pounds a day in 1925. That's a ton of tobacco. At the year's end, they were estimating 20, 220 million pounds of tobacco. Believe that? And we had four tobacco warehouses at the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's pave our streets. Okay, this is Lake City News and Pub, or Lake City News. Um, that an issue was in November of 1925, and they were advertising. The first paved streets went from the Presbyterian Church to the Methodist Church. Rest up was still not paved. Nineteen twenty five. Remember we had that three thousand is wrong. The population lakes it is about two me two thousand. Had thirty young people to go to college from Lake City. And a bunch of them you can go ahead and read. Um, Dr. J.D., Mr. Rat Whitlock, Merck Epps, Guy McFadden, Ms. Beth Rittenbaker, Ms. Hazel Tomlinson, Ms. Helen Jonah Floyd, the two uh, Gowdy sisters. So we had 30 of our bright young people to come to go to college. Okay? All right, I'm going to trust y'all. You can't have it. <laughs> you can't have it. 
1925, we had U-Grape, Lime Cola, The Orange Crush, Carolina Club, and also um, Coca-Cola bottling plants in Lake City. And this bottle is an example of the lime cola. If you look at the bottom, it'll say Lake City, South Carolina. Now, I don't know. I can't tell you that. I think, yeah, one of the, um, I think the storage unit or the warehouse was on that line. Right. Okay, huh? Yeah, yeah. Kings Reef versus Lake City. In 1925, it was just in the newspaper saying that Lake City football team was never scored on. Sadly to say, 1925, we're going to have a bunch of them that it. This is the team. Okay? These are the players. Mr. Hager Floyd, Claude Wise, that had Wise and more than Wise records. Mr. Brantley McDaniel, Clarence Holloway, Rollins Epps. Look at the score. The first one was a safety. We beat Darlington with a safety. Then we had a bunch of losses. 45 to nothing. 48 to nothing. 45 to nothing. 76. But we did win the last three. And we ended up the season by beating Lydia 60 to nothing. we got to put this in. In 1925, even though Carolina lost Saturday night, in 1925, we, beat, we Carolina beat Clemson by a score of 33 to nothing. And the Deep River Company is being put together. And they'd be ready for business soon. And this is in October of 1925. I'm glad you're here. 1925, the United Methodist Church sponsors, Lake City United Methodist Church, sponsors a new church. And it's at Brown Town, which is nine miles east of Lake City. Okay? And Dr. Wembley would have uh, services in the morning at Lake City Church, and then in the afternoon he would go over to Brown Town. The roller mill. Mr. Charles Kelly's roller mill um, had been in operation for a while. So his son, Mr. Charles's father, bought it. And they produced 50 barrels of flour a day. And 
And this was where the South State Bank was. Am I right? Now, we got some suspicious fires going, <laughs> December the 28th, okay? Just behind Main Street, north of the railroad. Had no fire whistle, but gunshot, okay? That's how we alerted the fire department by shooting uh, a shotgun. 19, uh, 1728. And then Mr. Gravely, which was our Mr. Gravely, Randy Gravely's grandfather's warehouse, caught on fire. And actually, is the ruin of Mr. M. R. Gravely, because he died four years later. Next time will be January twenty second. We won't have one in December because of Christmas. Two thousand eighteen. Two thousand nineteen. Two thousand nineteen. Excuse me. <laughs> That's two mistakes I made tonight. Okay. Thank y'all for coming. And we do have a lot of refreshments across the street. Thank y'all for coming.